We focus in this session on 1 Thessalonians 1, verses 2 to 7, and perhaps in this particular session, just on verses 1 through 3, probably. And the reason for focusing here is because these verses, especially verse 3, gives us an occasion to illustrate how, when interpreting the Bible, we need not just to take the phrases as they stand, but then once we see the phrases and their relationships, bore in and and ask, what's the reality being spoken of here? So, Father, I pray that as we look at these few verses, you would give us eyes to see what's really here in the phrases themselves that you inspired, and then the reality that you are trying to communicate through those verbal phrases. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. We give thanks to God always for all of you, constantly mentioning you in our prayers, remembering before our God and Father your work of faith and labor of love, and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers, loved by God, that he has chosen you. Let's just stop there because we won't get any further, but that's where we're going to go next time. We are giving thanks to God. And we're giving thanks to God for something that you have done for your work, remembering your work, remembering your labor, remembering your steadfastness. So that's the main assertion. Paul is thanking God for their work of faith and their labor of love and their steadfastness of hope. Now, that's very significant. We'll come back to it in just a minute. It clearly indicates, doesn't it, that God is involved in bringing about what they are doing to such a degree that God is being thanked. So maybe we could put, um, this shows that God is the decisive cause behind these things. I mean, if if you did a, a nice thing for me, and I knocked on your door, and a friend, and you were in your room, and I, I looked at your friend, suppose your name is Jim or Mary, and your friend's name is Joe, and I walked in and I said, Joe, Thank you for Mary's kindness to me. That wouldn't make any sense unless somehow Joe had been very instrumental in bringing about your kindness to me. So that's the first thing to see is that he thanks God. Remembering before God uh, your work of faith labor of love, steadfastness of hope, faith, love, hope. Now, you could just say, okay, those are three crucial dimensions of Christian living that are all owing to God's work in our life, and you could leave it at that. Or you could say, now, what are the relationships between these? And in asking the relationships between these, Do we see deeper into the nature of the reality being spoken about? And I think that's what happens. For example, if we ask here, what's the relationship between a work of faith and a labor of love? And we stop and ponder, and it's this pondering that is so important. This is what I want people to do more of. A work of faith would be a work that flows from our faith, and somehow our faith is giving rise to this good work. And a labor of love is is a labor that is coming from our 
love, and love is becoming active and producing labor, and our steadfastness is coming from our hope, and our hope is enabling us to press on and not grow weary. But wouldn't you agree that this work here that faith produces is not an unloving work? And this labor here that love produces is not an unbelieving labor? And if this love that produces labor, if the labor is not unbelieving and the work is not unloving, then aren't these two the same? Isn't, isn't this labor the same as this work? And it's two ways of describing how it comes about. Our belief gives rise to a a life of loving work for others. Our love give rise, gives rise to a, a faithful, faith-filled labor for others. So I don't think the labor and the work are two different days, two different kinds of activity. One is, is loving and the other is faith-filled. No, a, a loving labor is a faith-filled labor, and a faith-filled labor is a loving labor, and steadfastness is the perseverance in both of them. And so these three things, this work, this labor, this steadfastness, are all referring to the same thing. And what Paul is drawing out is that our faith and our love and our hope are all involved, essentially, in bringing about the life of the Christian, which is a labor uh, for others. Now, how, how, how is faith and love and hope, how are they related to each other? Well, one way to answer that question is to think that uh, faith, usually in response to the gospel, is awakened and we trust Jesus and his promises, and flowing from faith is love. And so faith is more basic, and love is the fruit of it. And here's a verse that says that virtually in Galatians 5, 6, for in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision counts for anything, but only faith working through love. So if you come back here and say, how does faith produce this work? It produces it through love. How does love produce this? It produces it because faith is awakening love. So, well, before I draw it, hope relates, I think, by being almost the same as faith, only in the future tense. Faith is in a person and in promises, and therefore faith can look back to a person's faithfulness and trust him. It can look forward to the promises that are going to come true because of that person's faithfulness, whereas hope is always in the future tense, right? Hope is, hope is faith looking into the future. So I don't distinguish faith and hope except that faith is the larger idea and hope is a form of it. Like it says in, in Hebrews 11.1, uh, faith is the substance of things hoped for. They're overlapping realities. So I would say, I would put it like this, faith, hope, as one big reality, gives rise to love. It does that by overcoming all the fears and all the greed that militate against being a person for others. And that love then gives rise to work, labor for others. Now, when it says here, for we know, brothers, loved by God, that he has chosen you, it brings it in the question, okay, how does election relate to these three things, and in particular, God's getting thanks? So the main point here is our faith is awakened the faith gives rise to love. 
the faith is in its future form hope. And so faith hope gives rise to love, which gives rise to work and labor, which remains steadfast. And all of that we're thanking God for because he is the decisive cause of that faith and that hope and that love.